insightful discussion on the story behind established brands entering the pet business. For this, we have the privilege of hearing from Mr. Nimesh Katyar, founder of Purport Story, Dr. C.K. Katyar, CEO Healthcare at Imami Limited, Dr. Piyush Prashant, Vice President at Mankind Pharma, and Mr. Yashchari, Director of Rosary Biotech Limited. This session will be moderated by Mr. Govind Suryavanshi, Director of Government Affairs, Public Policy and Advocacy at Royal Canine. Inviting to the stage our moderator to this panel, Mr. Govind Suryavanshi. He has completed his post graduation in food technology coupled with executive MBA from IIM Kolkata, having 20 plus leadership experience in public policy and government affairs, government regulations, regulatory and public affairs. Mr. Suryavanshi also holds significant positions with industry and trade associations, just to name a few. He is the president at All India Association of Pet Food Manufacturers, <coughs> Vice President, Indo French Chambers of Commerce and Industry, Member at Tech Food Regulatory Affairs Committee, Lead at SIFTI and FIKI, and Lifetime Member Association of Food Scientists and Technologists of India. Welcome to the stage. We also have with us Animesh Katyar, CEO and co founder of Furball Story, as our first panelist for this session, a lawyer by education. Animesh started for a ball story back in 2016 with pet care services as his prime focus and has recently entered the veterinary pharma vertical. The youngest in the industry to provide such a vast array of services and products in his portfolio, he is also a certified animal behaviorist and dog trainer with specialization in therapy and production training. Animesh has been blessed with a family background of Ayurveda. Animesh is also one of the few extremely passionate individuals in the industry who just didn't enter business for the reasons of economy, but also to make a difference in the lives of animals. Thank you so much, Animesh, and welcome on board. Our next panelist is Dr. C.K. Katyar, CEO Healthcare Imami Limited, an MD in Ayurveda and PhD in Pharmacology. Dr. C.K. Katyar is the force behind Furball Stories Ayurvedic products. He has more than 35 years of industry experience in the research and development of products spanning across categories from Ayurvedic medicines to nutraceuticals as well as pharmaceutical products. He has held epic positions in top Indian brands like Dabur and Ranbaxi. In fact, the amalgamation of traditional wisdom of Ayurveda and modern medicine is Dr. Katya's brainchild. Our very own popular Chavan Prash was his invention and gift to every Indian childhood. Thank you very much, Doctor, and welcome. On board. Next to join stage is Mr. Yashchari, Director, Marketing and Business Development, Rosari Bartek. He holds a Bachelor's Degree of Science in Chemical Engineering from the University of South Florida. Post completion of his education, Doc, Mr. Yashchari joined the company in 2019 and has taken the company to great heights. Uh, final panelist to the session is Ms. Doctor. So we will have uh, these four gentlemen take the stage now. Thank you, boy. First of all, big thanks, big thanks uh, to all of you. And special thanks to IAPTF as well as Binoy and his team for organizing and Linda Ma'am for giving us an opportunity. Uh, uh, with this, I uh, welcome all the dignitaries on the dais, uh, especially E.S. Chari sir, Animesh and Dr. Katyar. Uh, it gives me an immense pleasure to welcome you all and host this session. Uh, and, and it also gives me an immense pleasure because the session which, which we had, uh, the preceding session was very, very uh, insightful wherein we understood the overall pet food industry overall pet care industry and its key opportunities as well as challenges and the trends. Now the session for the day which I would like to uh, anchor as well as give the insights from the from the panelists here is the story behind the established brands entering into the pet care business. So with this, uh, just, just give me a moment so I will settle down. Yeah. So, so to to give you the perspective about the entire entire established brands, which are the powerhouses, which are already the corporates into multiple businesses, business conglomerates, they are now entering into the pet care 
business segment, which is with all right reasons. So uh, I would like to start this dialogue by, by uh, asking a very simple question, sir, uh, Dr. Yesh Chari, sir. And, and the question for you is, uh, what are the key opportunities when it comes to the overall pet care business in India? And very specifically coming from, from the established businesses, and what is that key triggers that you do see in this particular area? Hello. Uh, so, good morning, everybody. It's nice to be a part of this forum, and thank you for asking that question, Govind. Uh, I would first like to point out that I got my start in this industry in 2019, uh, the year that I joined the company. And the first event which I attended was actually an IIPTF event. Uh, I was here um, not too long ago, and I heard a lot of speakers talk about the opportunity which really uh, existed in, in this space. Uh, it was uh, eye-opening to hear people from Mars talking about collaborations, brands coming together, and working to grow this category. Uh, that, for me, was uh, a starting point and a breakthrough in what this industry really represents. Uh, there's a, a, a whole lot of uh, togetherness uh, a strong uh, community building angle, uh, which IIPTF, of course, is doing. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, not to mention uh, the key uh, drivers would always remain the size, right? For any business, uh, the size of the industry really matters. So just to do some quick math here, uh, pet population, even if you estimate it by a stretch uh, to reach about uh, 30 million in the upcoming years, uh, if there is about 300 grams of average food being consumed. Uh, there would be about nine tons of food being consumed uh, on every single day in India. Uh, that equates to annually somewhere close to 50,000 crores of opportunity uh, in just uh, India itself. So this is the industry that we're present in right now. This is how it is growing. Uh, and uh, when you kind of extrapolate it a little bit further, uh, you talk about the strays which are also present uh, that itself is somewhere close to about 60 million in numbers. Uh, that's the pet population estimated, uh, which are actually strays or homeless. Uh, that in itself is, an, again, another opportunity in itself. So such exciting numbers are always uh, very, very uh, good to keep in mind, but also the strong sense of community, which everybody here collectively is trying to present. I think that for us uh, presents a huge opportunity. Yeah, and, and, and Dr. Yesh, you very rightly pointed out because there is a huge pet population in the country, which is, which is, which is itself is a opportunity. And in addition to that, the trends which, which uh, we are seeing now and uh, earlier session also highlighted on the pet companionship, which is one of the very, very important aspects. And there is a headroom for industry to grow is very, very high because the currently, as we say, uh, in India, the pattern of the consumption of food is still still a uh, homemade food because prepackaged foods consumption is still not reached to every household. Because if you see uh, the the overall calorie conversion rates which are in India are less than single digit when it comes to cats and dogs. Whereas this, the same calorie conversion rates are very, very high into the matured markets, as good as 100% into certain markets like Europe, like France or United States. So, so I think India being at the juncture where this is the right time for any business which is entering into the pet care, I'm using word pet care, is the right time, is what I'm understanding. Am I right? Absolutely. And uh, the numbers which I presented is the potential opportunity that lies in front of us. Uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, the actual conversion rates, uh, that has been a lot slower, uh, but it has been ramping up over the years. Uh, so when you look at just FMCG sector as a whole, uh, when people talk about it being uh, 2 lakh crores, 3 lakh crores, uh, you know, these sectors have matured. But when you look at the contribution of just packaged food, even in FMCG sector, that doesn't contribute to more than 30%. Uh, most of it actually comes from hygiene, from health. Uh, and we will see certain similar trends also emerging in the pet care industry. Uh, for us, a big blessing is that 70% of the category is already based on food, uh, which is uh, a drastically different picture than what uh, it is like for uh, humans here in India. 
when you go to Europe, when you say in US, uh, you will recognize that everybody's shelves and fridge is actually filled with packaged food, as opposed to here in India, where we are kind of groomed since our childhood to eat a lot of fresh food. Uh, those cultures do culminate, and that does affect the size of the industry. Uh, but as a category in whole, it is still uh, somewhat more easier uh, to, uh, to convince uh, than the actual human industry here in India. So the conversion is happening and of course uh, to ride the bandwagon of a lot of these uh, other pet care uh, you know uh, leaders such as Royal Ken and uh, you know like uh, the speakers before me were mentioning, uh, they have put in a lot of work uh, to make sure that the infrastructure is ready. Uh, it is up to us now uh, to make sure that we really pump in the money, we make sure that uh, the, the business, the industry itself gets a lot more visibility and this is ultimately which will drive the awareness. That's how we grow the category. Yeah, thanks, thanks, uh, doctor. Uh, now I would request uh, an image, uh, please. Uh, this question is for you. And, and uh, since we have touched base upon the overall potential and the opportunity, uh, there is a very important aspect which we need to understand. And, and very specifically, an image because you are representing a very uh, startup venture, which is a furball story and which has been recently acquired by the by the imamis. So, uh, what are the according to you? What are the key emerging trends which are actually impacting the overall pet care consumption in India? And I'm I'm again, uh, it is related to the overall pet care businesses, not only limited to the food businesses. So, what is it that which is driving the overall consumption in into this this particular uh, area? So, uh, good morning everyone and um, I am um, honored to be here and thank you Binoy sir <coughs> for giving me the opportunity to speak here. I personally believe that the, that the one, one of the major factors that driving this industry and will drive this industry in future are children. And during COVID what happened, people did not buy dogs because they wanted to get dogs. People bought dogs or adopted dogs because children wanted to get dogs. And when we take children into picture, the second thing that comes is the thirst for knowledge. When a child gets a dog, he asks questions. How to train him, what to give him, why to give him, what if I give him this, what will happen, what if I give him that, that what will happen. So the key uh, role here is education. Then, uh, you know, education of children about nutrition, about training, sir very rightly said that we often ask the wrong question. Why is it that 100% of the people are consuming uh, packaged food in US or Europe? It's because they themselves not used to eating fresh food. As simple as that. In India, it's difficult to push, you know, uh, packaged food into households because we are cooking food three times a day daily on daily basis. All we have to do is put one or two percent extra effort and we'll be able to cook for the pet too. And then comes the role of nutraceuticals because with uh, home cooked food, we are not able to, you know, uh, generate enough nutrition or nutritional, fulfill enough requirements for the dog to stay at its full potential. So um, I think the willingness to learn about pet hygiene, training and ingredients, what can we, um, you know, give to dogs nowadays. Actually, if you, if you do a Google search analysis, this was one of the top questions. What is good for dogs to eat? Right? What are home vegetables can we uh, give to dogs? During COVID, two things happened. People got puppies, that was first. And then during the second wave, when instantly a lot of places were closed, people learned themselves to figure out how to make uh, biscuits for dogs, how to make food for dogs, which is as good as a packed food or something that is uh, being claimed as a superfood. Then uh, I personally believe that, you know, this millennial mindset of uh, having dogs before a child um, has opened up a lot of doors for a lot of opportunities, not just pet food, pet medicine, but everything. Uh, uh, I think in 2016 when I started uh, working, I I only knew a couple of trainers in India and was one of them. Varun Anand was one of them. But now I know there are, in India is full of top trainers amongst the world. 
and people now that i interact with because i run a boarding center as well i run a dog cafe as well and then i have a medicine business as well i get to interact with dog parents every day new 5 5 to 10 dog parents every day i have seen the shift from ji uh, doctor ne bola tha isliye de diya to humne padha humne samjha डॉक्टर ने सजेस्ट करा हमने अपने ट्रेनर से पूछा और देन हमने ये फिगर आउट करा कि ये देना चाहिए सो आई हैव सीन द चेंज इन शिफ्ट एंड 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 वेरी राइट बिकॉज़ द वे यू हैव यू हैव समड अप द एजुकेशन एट द लेवल ऑफ द पेड पेरेंट्स इज इज अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट एंड दैट इज वेयर व्हाट इज गुड फॉर मी एज अ ह्यूमन बीइंग मे नॉट बी गुड फॉर द पेट is absolutely true it's scientific right because this, their needs are different than the human needs so so we we as a as a pet care ecosystem we really need to engage we really need to educate our ecosystem partners about the importance of having the right nutrition for the for the growth of that pets over our life stages so that so that we are actually working for the ultimate a uh, pet which is in need rather than the pet owner or a pet parent right and 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 uh, to to your other point also there is a there is also a uh, big uh, trend which is moving towards the the uh, especially the question which was asked on the nutraceutical health supplement or a dietary supplement or a functional foods but i think we are we are still having a long way to go there because because fundamental fundamental point is we need to address the overall education and awareness about the importance and the relevance of prepackaged pet food for the needs and and in addition to this uh, i will and this is a very impo- in, interesting conversation because we are all pet care ecosystem industry fraternity together and we really need to understand this piece because this ecosystem needs to be elevated with with the knowledge sir uh, i will come to you because there is a very relevant question to you sir because you bring a lot of expertise into the innovations r and d and the te- technical stuff because you are representing imami which is a which is a very well known brand in india uh, and and recent acquisition of the new pet care business uh, my question to you is sir how do you see uh, how do you see the potential of this particular space which is categorically addressing the herbal as well as the ayurvedic as well as the novel ingredients with respect to the pet care industry in india because we as a in, we as a country are are known for the origin of the ayurvedas and so many therapies which were existing thousands of years ago are they relevant also for the pet care the way they are relevant for the humans thank you uh, at the outset i am thankful to the organizers for being given a opportunity and uh, thanks for asking a very interesting question you know at the end of mahabharat when all the pandavas were going to swarg who was with them a dog right and nakul samhita in ayurved nakul samhita was written about the ayurvedic uh, treatments for uh, horses and uh, the definition of ayurved is sage says that this is the science of life whose life it never says human life so there is vrksh ayurved about plants also the ashu ayurved the lot of uh, other things so it's a Uh, very very uh, extensive definition of ayurved covering all sort of life forms now when uh, coming to the use of same herbs yes ayurved says yat pinde tat brahmande what is in the brahman that same thing in the body body may be a dog may be a human may be a rat a cat what right same thing is there so therefore what is good for humans is good for animals also that is a basic principle because of the physiology because yeah. of the physiology Feature. yes so features may change some anatomy may change but basic physiology remains how to convert food into energy everything moves around that right so so therefore 
uh, and you might have seen when this pandemic happened, everybody became aware of a new term called immunity. Right? Mm -hmm. Everybody became aware uh, about the new term. Uh, and I was called Karasayan earlier, but now we call it immunity. Right? So when when he entered the when we started scouting for an area to invest where there are people who are uh, working in the emerging consumer needs uh, and uh, in the niche areas we decided to invest in the people behind the wheel rather than the business itself so we when we analyzed we spoke to him we looked the ideas then suddenly we came to know that this uh, Immunity is equally important for dogs also. So you are not aware about that. So the moment you tell me that immunity is important for dogs also, I have got multiple solutions. Right from Giloe, which everybody knows. Giloe to Ashwagandha to that thing. Right? What is lacking is, yes, it is good for the human being, but we have one, number, one thing also you should remember. That in the field of drug development. Dogs play a very important role in the toxicity ultimate animal is the dog and monkeys which are subjected to tox and if the product works them it works for humans also. Therefore what is good there is good for them. 90% you can say for 10% you need to keep a... Uh, there will always be specificity yes. according to the right. body type condition requirement and that is right. where that is where the whole requirements vary right because be it, be it basic requirement like the nutritional oh, components right. or be it oh, the right. basic requirement. So, uh, you are, you are uh, getting into a very interesting conversation which is, which is like very close topic to our hearts because historically we are a country uh, who is known for its own heritage and culture. I will, I will uh, pause for the moment. I will come back to you for, with the next question which is very, very interesting. Uh, before that, I will again uh, reach out to Dr. Yesh. Uh, and, and Dr. Yesh, this is, this is again, uh, you, you are representing a, a company which is Rosary Biotech, which has, been a, which has been a powerhouse into the specialty chemicals and then into the animal health and nutrition, right? Because you are also entered into the pet care category very off late in 2019, I guess. So, so uh, what, is, what is that uh, specific thought on a sustainable business model because you are, uh, and, and this is this is a specific question. What is that specific thought on a sustainable business model when it comes to pet care industry in India? Because you also bring a wealth of knowledge. You also bring a, a wealth of know-how from a traditional way of operating into India, into the big businesses, right? So if you can just throw some light on that so our audience will also get a perspective because this is very, very... Uh, important for the growth of our Indian economy in totality. Absolutely. So um, I'd like to first start by a small correction. Uh, I just go by Yash. I'm actually not a doctor. Yeah, uh, that's a big correction. Uh, I though I'm from a family uh, of entrepreneurs uh, and not just a family uh, in the literal sense, but also an organization which represents entrepreneurial uh, spirit. We are currently present in about 19 different industries. Uh, we work with top names in FMCG as their development partners, as their technology partners. Uh, we work with Dabur, Unilever, Marico, Godrej, uh, Raymond, um, you know, just to name a few of them from vast different industries. Um, and through each of them, what we've really learned over the years is that framing a strategy is not really about knowing what to do. It's also about knowing what not to do. Uh, you know, and that is the crux of how you make a sustainable brand uh, and you make a sustainable business. Uh, I think the gentleman here would vouch for the same. Uh, when you're in a boardroom, the discussion is often not led by conversations of what the potential could be. It is also about finding the ways to mitigate the risks uh, which are present everywhere and across. Uh, this is the traditional way of thinking, but it is also uh, the way which has kept us sustained over the years. Uh, this is what differentiates economies and also companies which are standing on stilts of debt, uh, you know, and companies which are actually churning out a lot of cash. Uh, oftentimes we get lost at looking at, uh, you know, the turnovers and the overall sales that a company is achieving. 
when you turn the balance sheet to the flip side when you look at their cash flows and their profitability the story is often very different uh, this is something uh, where the, the the strength or the magic of compounding effect really comes in uh, when you have a loss even though it is very small if it keeps compounding over the time it is going to eat you alive uh, similarly if you have profitability though as small as it is uh, when you look at the power of compounding over time this will multiply it might not yield results immediately but when you look at it even when you're saving for yourself you know from your personal wealth uh, you know if you keep joining 1000 2000 5000 rupees per month uh, when you look back around the time when you're about to retire it will be the last 5 years or maybe the 6 7 years uh, where the actual power of compounding really comes in so this is how the strength of compounding even affects small businesses do not look at overall delta just year on year look at how much you've been able to change day on day uh, whether you're able to manage your finances your working capital very correctly this is uh, something that all of us really need to be more savvy about uh, and this is where the beauty really lies when it comes to also sustaining businesses uh, one of the biggest thing which really kills a lot of fmcg players and uh, industry agnostic thought you know like um, over here inventory is something you need to learn how to manage very well uh, you know, a uh, lot of people get caught up. I have family friends who have had, you know, very strong franchises uh, who have got caught up in this vicious cycle of having high inventory. Uh, this is where you this is a secret wealth eater. This is not something which is going to create wealth over the time. You need to manage your inventories correctly, uh, especially with e-commerce coming in play right now. Uh, you know, you can uh, disregard the long chain of supply chain which used to be there. Uh, where you have stockists and distributors and CFAs and whatnots, uh, where you're storing inventories for months and months at a time. Now you can dispatch products ready made right away from your home, freshly delivered to you know your customer's house. Uh, this is how you can actually curtail your in uh, your investments in the business itself. It doesn't take a lot of money to get started. What what is required is the true meaning of entrepreneurial spirit, and this is what we carry at Rosari as well when we look at different businesses that we want to enter. This is a small thought on maybe sustainability. Yeah, and, and thanks thanks for uh, giving that uh, perspective because uh, in today's scenario, everything is to be looked into the lens or looked from the lens of a sustainability. And and when we say sustainable growth, of course it is, it has to be by design integrated with the elements of sustainability, which is which is very, very important because there is only one planet there is no planet B for us, right? So thanks, thanks for your thoughts. Uh, Mr. Animesh, uh, with, with a very similar thought, I, I just want your perspective on, on uh, in, in this particular pet care segment, because you are representing the true, uh, true Indian uh, scenario. And when I say true Indian scenarios, a startup which has grown into the recent years has been into the journey, which is a very upward journey. So, so uh, what is that? specific adaptation to your business model which you have done so so the adaptation to the new business model versus the contemporary business models because that's that's something which please help all the all the ecosystem here it will be very good to hear from you so i actually you know agree a lot with you um, when it comes to the point that you talked about on sustainability uh, especially inventory management, spends, working capitals. And uh, with that, what I want to uh, say is that um, my input here is that first, don't blindly spend on marketing, spend on pet parents. We haven't reached that stage yet where we blindly spend on marketing and our ROS will increase. First, we need education of pet parents and then we, we have to uh, gain the trust, gain the loyalty of the pet parent and then probably it will give us, you know, long term uh, results. So that and then, you know, I honestly think with the um, uh, with pet industry, we have to follow both uh, business models, the older ones and the new trends that are coming up. So um, with, with our personal experience, uh, revenue comes 50% 50, 50, 50 from general trade and 50% from online business. And uh, uh, the thing that we are doing differently or I think should be done dif differently is 
uh, again spend money to reach out to your customer directly. So what we do is we generate leads, we reach out to our customers directly via chatbot, we ask them what problems they are facing in day to day life. Uh, this helps us not just make them buy the right product but helps us develop the right product for future purposes. Um, and you won't believe our major clientele does not come from tier 1 cities, it comes, it comes from tier 2 and tier 3 cities. Everyone thinks that dogs are present in uh, Delhi, Bombay, uh, Lucknow, Bangalore, Hyderabad. But trust me, go to a, city, a small city like Fatehpur and you will find every second uh, dog, home with a dog. It's just that we don't know that they are there. And uh, with our healthcare range, I realized that this is a very good market to tap because they don't have products. Um, spending money in tier one city or tier two city, tier one city to you know generate revenue will uh, take time. But at the same time, I can spend one tenth of the money and capture one city, one small tier three city in just a week. Um, secondly, technology plays a lot of uh, part in you know modern business when I'm saying technology it's not just the computer it's product innovation till date we haven't made <clears throat> much use of sublingual technology in dogs right in humans it's very very common so we came up with a product uh, you just spray it on the tongue it, it just has to touch the saliva anywhere and within two seconds everything gets absorbed in the body so when we are talking about technology, I think there's a myth or, or let's say I think we are, we are going on the wrong track that we are only talking about computer technology, we have, we have to also talk about product technology. And there's a lot of scope in US, China, Europe, we should go there, we should experience what they are doing, what kind of products they are doing and not just product wise, in fact in treatments, we just, Dr. Kunal sir just said that we got the first CT machine in India for dogs, which is really embarrassing. The first CT machine now. Now, which is quite late. Right. Yeah. Right. Considering. And uh, I think the whole industry needs to pick up pace with the West when it comes to pet care, uh, treatments, ingredients, processes, and uh, learn from experts here also. So I see two people sitting and we are totally here and Colonel to be here. Food ke baare mein, mein baat karu, so, uh, everyone is you know focused on big specific food, puppy food, adult food. My input is, I think uh, the expert trainers here would agree that a German shepherd who, is in my, who lives in my place, who is a couch potato, would have different nutritional needs than a working German shepherd that is a turtle too. We need to focus on those aspects also. What is a working line German shepherd or Let's say a German Shepherd who just generally works who has a task every day than a German Shepherd who sits at home. Similarly with a Labrador or a Beagle or... So there are multiple aspects that we haven't even seen. <coughs> and, and, and very uh, insightful language because uh, you know there is about three things in totality. One is the overall education and awareness level at the, at the overall ecosystem partners level including the pet parents, pet owners. Then the second thing is the technology, which is not only the digital digital version of it, but the product innovations as well as the individualizations, which are the need of the hour, considering the overall overall trends and and considering the overall pets needs, and 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 then third thing is uh, how how these two things actually uh, complement each other in in bringing the bringing the right recommendations very categorically for that particular uh, need of the hour, considering whether it is food or whether it is uh, beyond food, right? So I think these are the three three takeaways if uh, if we are to understand, which you have actually adopted or we, which is what you are suggesting for the new entrepreneurs or who are entering into this segment as well as the existing businesses who are already there, but they are trying to make the inroads and and very very uh, thankful to that uh, sir uh, i will i will come back to you now because you touched base upon a very important conversation which was on the herbal and the ayurveda my question is coming back to uh, coming back to uh, the overall overall regulatory landscape because that is very very important aspect considering 
considering the growth of Indian pet food industry or Indian pet care industry in totality. And since you touch base upon very specialty things like the uh, herbal ingredients, the Ayurvedas, the nutraceutical, the dietary supplement or feed supplement, food supplement, this sector, how do you see the current regulatory scenario in the country? Are we, are we uh, a nation which, which is encouraging the pet care businesses to operate with true principles of ease of doing business or still it is a, it is a, a long way to go for us? Uh, thank you. It's a very relevant question. I think it's a gray area right now. So if you talk of drugs, the definition of drug and the definition of ASU, what is Ayurved, Siddha, Yunani, Homeopathy, and Sovarekpada, Tibetan medicine. Their definition includes veterinary. But the definition in Food Safety Authority does not include veterinary. Yeah, out of a scope. Now, uh, that's one. Number two, uh, if you go to the market, see a lot of products, they will be writing herbal medicine. Herbal medicine is not at all a legal entity in this country. Right? So therefore, lot of confusion is there, lot of products is there which are actually misbranded. Uh, because neither they are following the rules of Ayurvedic medicine, though they are only herbal, but they are not following the Rule 161, which is the labeling uh, requirement. They are, they are not following that. Right? So, so that's, that's one area and uh, people are buying because it is herbal, so it is good. So the literacy, even among the veterinary doctors, is not there about the uh, how to read the label of Ayurvedic medicine by regulatory and what are the regulatory provisions. Uh, that, that, that's one very important thing. So one of the, one of the uh, ideas why we invested uh, in Farbal story was this gap area. Because though product markets uh, are full of herbal medicine, but all of them are, most of them are misbranded. So we wanted to correct that market and introduce the regulatory right way of uh, following right labeling uh, on the product. That's yeah. And uh, see, this is this is one aspect of uh, being aware and self-regulation self-regulatory in nature right. that's something which you are you are highlighting here but my my if i i have to generalize the question at a very umbrella level uh, my question would be in the current context of indian regulatory scenario be it be it say for example since pet care industry is involved there will be few things which will fall into the uh, uh, cdsco regulations which is the Drugs and Cosmetics Act, there will be few things which will fall on the on the other side, which is being governed by the Department of Animal Husbandry, Dairy and Fisheries. There will be few things which will not be here, not be there, but will be governed by, say, for example, FSSCI. Right? So I'm saying in that context, in this today's scenario, do you see uh, as, as a country when we are talking about so many things uh, like ease of doing business in India, is that area uh, doesn't look like still a gray area where there has been no specific uh, framework has been put in place I with respect to the overall environment because see you you will have to find your own way is what is what is the current status is the overall industry opinion maybe you if you can share with your experiences and animesh if you want to add on to it yeah please do that because i, th I, I think you're right there are two apex bodies in india called DTAV, Drugs Technical Advisory Board. One at CDSCO and the other at Ministry of Ayur. I am member of the DTAB of Ministry of Ayur for the last 20 years. There is not a single person from veterinary industry who is member of this board. Right? In CDSCO, I am not aware. There may be people, but on this. So that much for the seriousness. Therefore, government, I think, so far, has not felt the need to regulate this area because it was, there was not much business. But the moment, the moment awareness grows, their antenna also will go up and they also will start looking at this. This will no more be gray area, just wait for four or five years time and it will be, it will change. If you want to add anything. Uh, 
uh, that's true. Uh, in the coming five years, I'm really hopeful things will improve. But right now, um, so pet medicines is still uh, all, still has a lot of regulations in, in uh, regulations in place, but they, they are just not being followed by some. But on the other hand, the services business hardly has any regulation in place. Uh, if you run a boarding, if you run a dog walking service, if you are a trainer, which association do you join? What are the guidelines to operate? What tax brackets are there? Uh, whether GST registration is mandatory? What is the license permit you need on the land to operate? So recently in Gurgaon, the rule came up for registration of dogs, mandatory registration of dogs by MCG. And uh, someone inquired uh, me whether you know it's mandatory and what are the pointers and should we do it or not. And I had zero idea, but I, had, I just had one question. I have around 30, 35 dogs who live in the farm. Most of them are rescued. Now, do I register them or not? And the chap at the MCG had no answer. He himself don't know. The dogs are like my pet dogs. They live in farm, my farm, but they are not my pet dogs. Now this person is blank. So, uh, and when it comes to food, I think we need a lot of regulations in place because the moment we leave out nutraceuticals or food from any regulation, it gives a lot of uh, dark. Uh, exactly. And it will it will un proliferate the unnecessary uh, misintentions as well as the you know, misinterpretation will lead to the wrong product being entering into the market, which is not at all good for the overall health of this uh, pet care industry. And 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 to yeah, please. So to add to what they're saying, um, you know, I'll share a, a, a small anecdote from our past. Um, and I'll probably speak in Hindi for a second so that everybody can understand. So, in our factory, there is a section where we FDA approved section, where we make cosmetics ke products, where we make uh, medicated products. Banate uh, and when we acquired Lozalo, the uh, FDA people came to us and said, where will you manufacture? You make cosmetic products, you make such products. Banate you cannot get approval from FDA for manufacturing such products in your same facility. This is the kind of questions that you face on a day-to-day basis uh, when it comes to rules and regulations. Not to pinpoint faults, but this is an area where we really need to focus and we really need to harness our capabilities. If we ourselves um, as industry uh, you know, leaders cannot assure that we're uh, providing quality products made under you know, standard environments, um, then I don't think anybody else would be able to. So being a spokesperson uh, in this industry, this is very, very critical that we'll, we look at it this way. Um, also, when it comes to food regulation, a uh, lot of us are left to self-regulate. Uh, it should not be uh, that we need government intervention to also regulate ourselves. Uh, but at the same time, it's very, very critical uh, that what is mentioned on the labels is what the customer is getting. Uh, because at the end of the day, what matters is the health of that pet whom we are actually, uh, you know, uh, looking after. Um, as an industry, we're taking care of them. We are helping the pet parents become more empowered. By uh, going back on our words, it's counterproductive, uh, you know, to provide something which is not as we claim. Uh, this is why self-regulation has become um, very, very critical in this industry. Yeah, and, and very, uh, very critical input in this in this case, because we know this is an area where, where we also need to uh, come together hand in hand. Also, educate, 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 not only the ecosystem partner, but also to the regulators, because this is an area which is which is at this moment a key challenge because there is no structured regulatory framework which exists into the country even you take in category like pet food which has been an established category as compared to the accessories or as compared to the diagnostics or as compared to the other uh, uh, treats kind of a thing but still the pet food in this country is yet not having a one basic simple standardized or harmonized approach which is which is very very uh, uh, it is a situation for us because if we really want to showcase us as a, as a next big sunrise sector in the country we need to have basic minimum quality food safety hygiene as well as the nutrition standards because 
end of the day the the end user is a pet which we need to have an emotional cue than the iq which is in so that their needs are catered and and how you are going to cater to the needs of the pets by ensuring that there are basic minimum requirements which are met and which are being served which are important for that life stages because it when it is a puppy stage it has a different requirement when it grows into the adulthood it has a different requirement and when it it is into the senior adulthood it has a different requirement so i think we need to in totality we need to come together and address this particular part work on the harmonized approach and 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 build build up the overall sustainable ecosystem for the growth of this pet food industry and the entire pet care industry because there is a huge potential nobody doubts about the potential of this uh, industry because in the simple figures which we were just just uh, listening to the earlier speakers i will i will just appraise everyone about the figures see it is close to a 1 billion dollar industry is what we uh, we share like shashank and sat satinder were sharing and we are talking about total pet care industry we are taking all ecosystem one is main meal which is the the basic nutrition fundamental other one is the treats and and so and so forth the third one is an accessory which is to do with everything for that pet and the fourth one is a diagnostic which is a biggest uh, area territory so all those four together this industry is growing at a very fast pace at a kagar of 20 percentage year and and just to give you the figures the current size of the industry is almost 4000 crore in india and i am talking about the pet food the main industry and this is slated to grow almost double from today's size which is 8000 crore so what is it needed at this moment is working closely hand in hand with the entire ecosystem fraternity and also with the regulators because they are also in need of help so we need to strengthen these partnerships use these platforms and and come together and bring that self regulation into a some kind of a regulation or some kind of a standard which will establish us as a next manufacturing hub and the export hub for this country i think with this uh, we will come to the conclusion of the session uh, and and thanks thanks for your active participation uh, yash animesh and uh, dr saab so big thanks uh, over to you thank you Only to say thank you and uh, congratulations for these uh, events. And uh, for us, uh, it's a big pleasure to cooperate with the international activity with the organizer. And uh, thank you very much. And uh, I hope to see you in Bologna in 2025. Thank you. Thank you so much. I request Mr. Antonio to please felicitate our speakers.
have any questions for the group? There was an international Ayurved conclave on the theme of veterinary and Ayurveda, which was inaugurated at uh, Rishikul campus of Ayurvedic University. I am sure you must be aware of it. So there is an effort towards integration of Ayurveda in the veterinary sciences and formalizing it. And you, in your capacity, would help in um, developing it further and formalizing it. And I'm myself a pet owner and uh, into the pet industry. I'm very much in, uh, enthused with the uh, Ayurvedic uh, pet products. Yeah. I try to introduce it to the parents, but the stumbling block lies in the veterinarian pr uh, prescribing it, you know. Well, it remains a <laughs> challenge for me. Though the effects the, uh, are immediate, but then the first step of the parents to introduce it to the uh, pet and uh, use it uh, themselves is a big challenge. It remains a challenge. Certainly, it's a, uh, 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 we need to uh, this industry need to uh, share the products and uh, create awareness among the veterinarians in the language what they understand, especially the pharmacological terms. So, in right. comparison, I found homeopathy to be more popular in the even in the pet industry. Okay. Vis -a -vis okay. Ayurveda, because going yeah. to pharma, if you heard, they have very uh, forcefully introduced it into the uh, I am a, by the way, I am a Indian Army veteran. So okay. I am a pet lover and that's how I am uh, fall into, came into this industry. Re recent, recently introduced myself into the industry, particularly in the field of grooming. But then as we get pet parents to our salon, we find them uh, uh, prey to a lot of skin diseases and uh, coat, skin and coat problems, which we have to address and when you're going through the grooming process. So we try to educate the parents. Some do learn from it and there's a lot to learn for them, like we all know. And similarly, like Goelbert Pharma is educating people if the Ayurvedic industry also educates, education like uh, Nimesh brought out is a very, very important point. And that will make your reach more uh, this thing. Sir, we are actually working on that. Actually, the issue that we are also facing is that 99.9% .9 of the education in veterinary is from allopathy, right? So within six months, you will see new courses come uh, coming up in Ayurvedic veterinary, uh, especially for uh, pet parents and other diploma courses for uh, doctors who want who are keen to learn uh, about uh, veterinary Ayurveda. Yeah, pet parents as well, yes. Uh, I have a small, just I want to uh, elaborate more on Colonel P. K. Chug. Uh, very rightly, Animesh brought out the aspect of education, which is very, very key to this success of this entire ecosystem and creating this ecosystem. And education, as he has already told about the children, pet parents, but I, what I feel is more critical is the train the trainers because those are the people who are further advising these children and the pets. So we need to bring this entire subject into the organized education system. As of now, there is no such initiative. Uh, in fact, I'm very proud to announce that we are starting the world's first course in association with National Forensic Science University. And we, we, have, we are uh, coming up with a new subject that's called as Canine Forensics something like your cyber forensics or DNA forensics. So we are coming up in this field so that people can understand the right and they can learn about authentic education with a, a university qualification. And this is just a beginning. We want to want it to further grow into a master's program or a research program so that people can look into as a career uh, in a full-fledged manner. Uh, so very rightly brought out this aspect. Thank you. Uh, just a food for thought. I wanted to quickly share on the same point. Uh, educating uh, the end consumer is one thing. Uh, also, we need to really work on the diagnostics uh, for all of these things. So when it comes to testing of pets, uh, you know, just to understand what to prescribe, you need to know the baseline. Uh, the testing facilities are so shady 
uh, it's very very difficult to get anything done i don't know how many of you have taken your pets for any kind of blood test ecg i uh, god forbid you have to do it uh, the experience is uh, gruesome because you have to go to places in the off hours uh, these are generally places which are uh, testing for humans uh, but under the covers they'll be also operating and helping uh, you know figure out the health requirements for pets uh, there are some pathology uh, you know labs which have come up now especially in bangalore and other regions uh, which are actually uh, addressing this big concern understanding uh, the actual uh, requirement or the baselines of uh, pet is very very critical uh, combine that with the power of education uh, and then also brands working collaboratively i think that is going to be the next roadmap for success when it comes to veterinary health well thank you so very much mr yashari and we are not going to take any further questions for this uh, session because we are running short in time you may please connect with our speakers uh, during the later time thank you very much thank you very much uh, a very warm thank you guys <laughs>